fine. Uh, I did yeah, make a few you updates. So okay, great. Okay, welcome everyone to the commissioner's work session on Monday, September 9th. Commissioner and Commissioner Bolo, and Commissioner Burr with me, Commissioner Harvey will be here shortly, but we will go ahead and get started with item one, discussion and or action for approval of the minutes of the commission work session held on August 26, 2024. Motion to approve. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, item two, discussion regarding NUEA contracts, Stephanie Russell, Ashlyn Tuckett, Chris Crockett, Lauren Thomas, and we also have Jessica Clark, Clark here. <laughs> I stumbled over your last name for some reason. <laughs> okay, Stephanie. Um, I'm actually just going to let Lauren and, and uh, Crockett jump in. We've been working with them to get this contract uh, revised, working with Davis County. And I think we're at a final draft. Yeah, Lauren, and yeah. If we, we've last heard from Davis County, we are. At yes, they got back to us yesterday and I did update with their changes. So okay. we have a couple of questions. Um, we'll probably add in a few things after we talk to you. But uh, yeah, this should almost be final. <laughs> Would you like to go in? Sure. Yeah. Um, okay, so should we start through the whole thing? What what's the best way to do it? Maybe we'll just do a major outline and then just point out the changes that we made. Um and just how the yeah, the contract is gonna work. Okay. Great. So yeah, we can just start at the beginning. So obviously this contract is between us, Davis, and NUEA um to continue with some of the services that we've had. And so starting at the beginning, um, we wanted to ensure that NUEA and Davis and Weaver are all considered separate entities in this agreement. Uh, one change to the Board of Advisors, previously it had listed the Board of Advisors and kind of given an outline of that board. What we did is we um, changed the contract to just reference the bylaws of NUEA. So, um, the bylaws and NUEA set up their board. And uh, so this way with the contract, just mentioning the bylaws, um, NUEA can make changes to those bylaws as needed. Um, and the board composition really is in the hands of NUEA. So we just simplified it so that it just references the bylaws, which will attach as an exhibit. Too many questions on the board? No. I think so. Okay. Not for me. Okay. So this next part, and this is where we'll want some feedback from you, is the strategic marketing plan. So this is something that NUA will have to submit to us every year, um, detailing what their plan is. And we, one thing we wanted to ask you is what things you would like to see specifically in that plan. Um, and this clause also like consequences of um, failing to submit that uh, plan every year. So you don't have anything right now. It doesn't look like there's just a yes. We did it very broad to see exactly what we would like to uh, see in that. Plan. So on that last line where it says the S and P shall include the following, is that yeah? Are you so like a list of things. Yeah, probably the easiest, okay. clearest. We want it to be clear so that they know exactly what to put in that plan. There's no confusion or question. I'm gonna look to you, Commissioner Frower and Stephanie, on your thoughts on that. Yeah, I think that's what was discussed over the last couple of months. So, I mean, I don't think it's a change in that. Thing. So, they're going to provide that. Okay. Yeah. And UEA is going to? Uh, yes, they'll yeah. provide us with the plan. Oh, they'll right. have to present it gotcha. each year so yeah. that we know exactly what I thought he'd already sent plan. you. I thought he'd already sent that to you like a month or two ago. The plan itself? The the marketing plan. and he's, we... He sent over reports from the last years, but this one will be coming up with a specific plan for this upcoming year. Um, so I don't know if I've seen a copy of what he plans on accomplishing for 2025. Okay. And that's what would be inserted here on this item? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, and it would be, um, and I guess one question I have, and sorry, I wish I, I, I should have brought this up earlier, is presenting the plan for the county to consider, um, they have to work with us during the respective budget process. So the only thing I worry about is in December, we're already going to be pretty much done with the budget process. So I don't know how we're going to determine how much to fund only for each respective year without uh, knowing what that SMP plan is during the budget cycle instead of December. I don't know if you want to change it to like September. 
Do you, do you see where I'm struggling? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you're not going to know how much money they're going to need if you don't know what right. their goals are for the year. Well, he's already sent in his budget. He gave that to us, I think, last May or June when we met with Davis County, I think. So I think for 2020. Which was the 75000 We budget taking 75000 for down from the 150 for this coming year. So that would be for the rest for, of this year and, and then next year. And the next, next year. year. Oh, okay. So, so that budget I was already set and agreed to by Davis County. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what, I guess when it comes to the 2026 budget, when do you want him to come in and start working with you to determine what he's going to do for that year? And for 2026? For 2026. And then how much you want to allocate? Oh, Will I'm, you be able to make that determination before he submits his plan on December First, I think we need the plan submitted. We need. I would think so. Yeah. Does the plan submitted yeah. earlier? Yeah, I don't know why you couldn't have the plan submitted by first of June or I mean. Right. Yeah. Before budgeting. Okay. Yeah. So so it's before budgeting. And no, that's. Yeah, just so you have an idea, because we do that with Visit Ogden. Right. Yeah. They come mm -hmm. during the budget mm -hmm. cycle. Maybe you formalize the plan, you know, later in December in conjunction with the actual budget, but just have like a draft. Um, presented during the budget cycle, and then you can work with him to modify goals, add, yeah. take away. Are you thinking end of June? That's end of June first. Yeah, I don't. I think he'd be ready to do. You know, whenever I probably the end first of July. I, so, so that I think we probably ought to make a, if we did it July one, he'll know what the state funding is if that drops. Okay. So if we did it then. Because that request, if all of a sudden the state goes mm -hmm. away, that request could go up. So. Sure. So an example of one so that you could mirror is TTAB. So TTAB, and they're actually not following their own policy, what they're here you're hearing today, they're a little late, but usually <laughs> they're supposed to present a draft right. and a proposal to you, like I believe July one. And then they take feedback from the commissioners and then you give final approval, I think like in September or something like that. Before our budget. Yeah, before the budget. And then that way you can go yeah. in and out and know how much to allocate to um, DTAB each year. I think we do the same thing with visit. Yeah, why don't we keep it consistent? Yeah. That'd be my suggestion, okay. Madam Chair. Yeah, I think so. We did July 1 and then yeah. we've right. kind of do the same yeah. process. We like a minute. draft on July 1. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I like and, that. Um, you'll confirm it sometime in September. Before we start the budget. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I think that's good timing. Okay. And Lauren, in response to your question about what it should include, I think pull that, let's just yank yeah. that out. Because it yeah. says right here in the very beginning, um, it shall submit an annual strategic marketing plan containing a description of marketing goals and metrics for the NUA. So just take that out. Broad like that? Yeah. And that okay. way we can work with what it has the... You know, as mm -hmm. the year is dictating, we'll just work. So remove that last line without yeah, the pull. I don't see we need yeah. to put anything sure. specific okay. in there. Yeah. As long as he has an approved SMP, mm -hmm. and that's a requirement before he can receive funding for the next uh, yeah. year. Okay. Does that need to be added in here? It says um, approval or acceptance is a condition precedent for renewal of the agreement. But it doesn't say anything about budgeting. Do we need to add the budget yeah. part piece in there? So I think, so are you going back to that paragraph C? Yep. So I think we're going to change the dates on that and okay. change it to um, July. July 1st mm -hmm. for draft. Yeah. Okay. And then if it doesn't result in an agreed upon um, SMP by September, then the agreement automatically terminates. I mean, of course, the county can extend and work with them. Okay. Um, so is it just implied then that the that the agreement includes their budget request, or does that need to be it still? It does up? in that in the very first couple of sentences, a corresponding budget will be presented annually. Okay. During yep. the okay. Budget Annual budget, budget, yeah. budgeting process. All right. That's good. Okay. Go ahead, Lauren. Okay. So then, for D on the management, um, so NUEA obviously and their independent contractors will be in charge of managing. Um, Davis did want to be sure that we included the second sentence there, that NUA's performance will um, shall not duplicate any efforts made by the county. Um, and then again, this, this kind of reiterates some of the things in the SMP, but including what NUA shall also provide, finalized program of work with the annual budget, um, quarterly financial reports, are you good with receiving quarterly reports? Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, annual report and audit for the previous year, including all of the forms that they need to provide for the IRS. 
and then a monthly email report would come to you um, detailing what they've been doing. Is that sound all good? I'm fine with that. You agree with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Great. Okay. The site selection consultants. This we pretty much left the exact same. No changes here. Um, to part B, F, public relations and promotions. And I'm pretty sure this was this was all almost exactly the same. I think I just broke it out so it was a little easier to read. Um, generating awareness, placing editorial content, um, in business publications. Continue branding, sending targeted mailings to specific lists, and then updating and maintaining their website presence, as well as social media. Part G, industry marketing, NUEA shall ensure Utah's value proposition is understood by key companies. So again, all just uh, working with the community and these key, key individuals, companies. Part H, local industry expansion and retention. Uh, and you shall connect with local and existing businesses to better support their needs. And um, again, part two, just making sure that this is something that they'll talk about in their SMP. Um, research, economic research will be foundational to the success of this partnership and setting some uh, standards, annually producing a regional labor profile and up updating and maintaining a real estate da database, which this was included before. So nothing new there. Regional coordination and collaboration. This is all uh, the same. Um, there will be monthly coordination meetings with the counties and their economic development departments to talk about the ongoing projects and um, enter space after three. <laughs> Sorry. Um, K, regional corporate recruitment success. This is the exact same. We didn't make any changes here again with the quarterly updates. And the term, okay, so the term, um, as we just said, this so this term is going to go through the end of this year and into 2025, all through 2025, because as we mentioned, we already worked out the budgeting process. So the first term goes till the end of 2025. And then after that, there will be an opportunity to renew um, this term for, we said up to five additional one-year terms. Is that okay? It's okay with me. I do have one question though. Sure. Um, so if this is an is this a new agreement? Because our last one's expired. The last one was with um EDC Utah. EDC Utah. And so that one expired in June of this year. But Chris understood that um, there wouldn't be any additional compensation um up until for the end of the year, but it is a new, entirely new agreement with a new entity. Okay, and uh, so we're okay to to enter this agreement with that entity? Is it something that we had, or we should have gone out to bid? I don't, or? I, 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 I just, I'm not sure, this sure. Is, might be a unique contract, but I'm just wondering, if, is it something that so we can just we, choose? So when we set this up, we contract, we needed somebody to oversee. Right. Right. The startup. So yep. we contracted with EDC Utah yep. and they brought in and Chris, Chris and his group. And then it was decided by the board after the first year with EDC Utah no longer doing what they do. They're mm -hmm. going because of the state contract, they're going into the chamber. Mm -hmm. We said we don't want to be part. Sure. So anyway, eight is direct opposite of the Salt Lake Chamber. So you know, we're northern Utah. So we just yep. decided the board voted and agreed that. We're going to create our own nonprofit. So we created NUA is now okay. a private uh, 401c3. Okay. So we're allowed to just so, yeah, have that without we making sort of procurement. That there's no procurement requirements, but I don't think there are. I'm not aware of any other nonprofit in the area that provides this type okay. of service. Okay. So, but I we just can, want to make we sure that we part. weren't violating anything. So, yeah. yeah okay. okay. I'll confirm. That. Okay. Thank you. And can I just clarify? Uh -huh. So that seventy-five thousand. My understanding was that was just through the end of twenty-four. Does that actually go through to twenty-five? Well, it will be brought back to our budget this year, right? Oh, I think you're... That's what I'm saying? Yeah, because Chris said for the entire year, when I called him, he thought it was 75000 and he wasn't expecting any more compensation for the okay. remainder of 2024. So he could be coming back for a uh, budget request for the 2025 um, calendar yeah. year. So so we funded... Our agreement was to fund 150 both Davis and Weber. Mm -hmm. We agreed for again 24. at the last board meeting that we'd both fund 75 for this year and 
and we get in the budget sessions based upon what Davis does, we may fund, you know, we may put it in 150, but fund 75. I mean, that's, we'll have to have that discussion. Yeah. But I think the idea right now, as long as the state participates, there's no reason mm -hmm. for the counties to put more than 75. Right. That's my opinion. But. Yeah. but that'll be addressed in, so is it addressed, Gage, is it addressed in um, their marketing plan that, that they've submitted already? With the 75? Yeah. My understanding when I talked to Chris was the 75 was for 2025. As well? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I. Yep. That's what he said last time. Okay. So I'm pretty sure this. Right well, so he's yeah, not the agreement was 75 for both 24 and 25. Yeah. Okay. So there would be no additional funding for 25. Correct. That's correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. As long as so, the I'm. Well, we I'm, just we want to sure verify that, that with that Davis, but I'm pretty sure that's what they're planning. Okay. Each year, I think so too. That's what their attorney said to me. What budget name for the next one? So I'm just worried that. Blake's written. It just needs to better so clarify I mean, that for the we put term. There's no funding. There was seventy-five thousand was previously allocated, or one hundred fifty thousand no. between both commissions. It has been agreed that that would go for the initial will, term. There will be no other payment for this first initial term. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's. I think that's what uh, everybody agreed to. Yeah. Okay. Make sure back in there. And then, did we have? Do we need a statement in there that talks about factors that will be considered in the budget, or is it just a given, like such as state contributions, um, existing reserve uh, amounts, um, or is that just something that will naturally occur when we go through the budget cycle with Chris each year? For twenty twenty five? No, uh, not for twenty twenty six. Because if we say he's got five hundred thousand in his reserve account right now, right. So if you the commission wants him to draw down upon that, I assume you're just naturally going to have conversations related to that when you do the 2026 budget. Mm -hmm. still well, that's why we reduced his budget by the 150. Right. So, but do you need anything in there that says like factors that will go into consideration for the budget or state contributions or no? I don't think that's just part of the negotiation. Yeah, I mean, basically that majority of that's all state money. That's not our money. Mm -hmm. So if we, you know. If he has issues, with, you know, that's up to the state to come in and say your budget's, your fund balance is too high. That's not up to us. Um, and I guess what you'll do is you're going to have him report on the money that he spent from the contribution from Weber County. And if there's anything left, you might consider that. Yeah. But we don't need to state that. In the mm, I don't think so. But I don't know how you break that out. <laughs> I mean, it just goes into a pot of money. Then he, I guess you could break it down by. He percent. Should, he should be doing his quarterly financial yeah. statements, uh -huh. and he should be able to allocate projects that were um, for Weber and Davis. I mean, I know it's a joint venture, but it shouldn't be completely commingled. Like if if he's spent money on going to conferences related to um, uh, uh, business activities in Weber County, he should be able to indicate that. Well, but he doesn't. Anything he, all his efforts should for both Davis and Weber. I mean, the conferences you go to can. Actually, there's probably more benefit to us than Davis a lot of cases, but he just doesn't go to site selectors to say, come into Weber. He's he's showing the entire area. His his direction is to do Davis and Weber. It's not Davis or Weber. It's both. So you're, you're comfortable. Uh, we don't need to have any like coming back and report on, you know, separate activities as long as it he's reporting on what is in the approved SMP. Yeah, I mean, he'll he'll, he'll go to a conference, but again, you know, the only way you could say, look, I've he's been a, so the conference, the state paid half, Davis paid a quarter, Weber paid a quarter. I mean, he could do that, but how do you how do you go to a conference and say, I'm gonna spend five hours on Weber and three hours on Davis? It doesn't what that if, doesn't work. What if the commission sorry, I'm just trying to make wrap my head around this. What if the commission specifically asked Chris to participate in a um, marketing for a business that was coming in directly to Weber? Well, that comes out of our budget, not his. So you got to separate again. We have our own economic. The stuff we do for Weber goes through Stephanie. You got to get get your head around. He's not Weber. He's not Davis. He's both. Anything he does is for both counties. And his is more a general his, area. His, his is the whole the If we want to do something for Weber, that goes through Stephanie. That's her budget. Are the commissions going to be approving the same SMP um, for each one? Or are they going to be separate ones? 
Well, I'm assuming no, I'm I'm assuming it'll be the same. same. I would say the same. the same. Yeah. Yeah. Do we need to clarify that? And in... I I think it's I think it sounds like it. I think it reads that way. Yeah, that's. Let me. He's not doing separate. Chris. Yeah, because it says he's consistent. not doing separate work for Weaver and separate work for Davis. Everything he does is the region. Yeah. So you got to get out of your head that he's going to be doing that step in his job. No, no, don't I, confuse him. No, I agree with you. I'm just making sure the agreement states that. Yeah, okay. I think it does. It says in that's, consultation I think with that's what it says. and Davis Economic Development Department. Tell me if it doesn't say that. Anyway, I'm, sure, I'm, I'm just I'm just bound to make sure that I read okay. uh, yeah. the language All right. exactly. You, but you've got to start. You've got to stop thinking the stuff we're going to get Weber efforts and Davis Weber. No, his job is both. Stephanie's job is Weber. The Davis team is there. Does that make sense to you? Or? Yeah, no, it makes sense. I, I guess I'm not seeing where you're. Yeah. No, I'm just making sure the language. Okay. Well, I think it says that Weber and Davis is quoted. Okay. 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 Perfect. So then for termination, uh, 90 days, we can terminate this with written notice. And uh, we also put in there to make sure that the the assets that are owned by each entity will go back to the entities. Um, for uh, compensation, I do have a question on part B. Um, and really this is just up to you how you want this to work. But um, if there are leftover funds, what do we want to have happen to those funds? Um, I think right now we have a right to go into a reserve account and that they can draw from for special projects. Is that okay with you? Would you rather? I'm okay with that. I just don't want to see that fund build up to a, an astronomical amount. I mean, it, it sh if yeah. we're funding this every year, it should be being spent. Yeah, and I and I think that's what he's going to do with his proposed budget, and that's why we're starting to draw it down. Um, yeah, I mean, um, but we want to have enough flexibility if all of a sudden the yep. state money goes. For sure. But yeah, I. I mean, I think, to, if I mean, the state money went away, we'd want to have enough maybe in reserve to phase yeah, that, you know, sure. so we don't get hit with it. But I just don't want to see it build. Whatever this needs to read so that it's not just building, building, building and, and not being spent to our benefit. We don't want that. Yeah. No, that's very true. I don't disagree. I mean, if they're 401c3 status, they have to show that they're doing something with that reserve. Yes. That's legal. That's illegal. Okay. I mean, here, so, so you have to show that if, if you guys just establish that, He'll have to show that in his budget how they plan to to utilize those funds. So, so you know, every year he has to go before a state committee that looks at his budget, looks at his fund balance. Mm -hmm. So, and again, he's he's got that set of eyes that's pretty through uh, you know ledge research analysis. He's getting you know he's justifying those expenses, and they you know they'll also because they'll meet in uh, probably end of January. They'll come back and say, "Look, you know, you you got to drop that fund balance or spend it." So, okay. I mean, that's being done right now by the state. Okay. 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 Um, section five, economic development incentives. Uh, okay, so we added this section about agency. So, um, just ensuring that NUEA is not an agent of the counties and doesn't represent Davis or Weber, respectively. Um. It and then part B again saying anyway is an independent entity for our respects and purposes and their employees are not entitled to benefits from the counties. And then violation of that section uh, would be a material breach of the agreement. Section six about administration. This is almost yes, the same. So um <clears throat> Just want to ensure that there's one designated member from each county commission um, that will meet. And this is jointly and quarterly, if you're okay with that, um, with an NUA staff person just to talk about the agreement. So that would be a quarterly meeting that one of you would attend. And then the next section, section seven, is all boilerplate. So I don't think we added anything huge to this. Oh. Was the oh oh yes? Can you talk about this one a little bit? So, section O of the miscellaneous or from section seven, um, 
that's called a non-funding clause. We use those in case um, one of the commissions decides not to appropriate money uh, towards the venture that it automatically relieves the obligation uh, to um, contract further. It just says if there's no money budgeted and available, you have no agreement. Okay. Um, so we put those in, pretty, they're pretty standard in most of our contracts. You're saying the legislative body has to appropriate money sufficient to actually do the contract. So, yeah. Okay. And I guess, P and Q, we did um, kind of clarify a little bit that you are able to request records pertaining to this agreement at any time. Um, and as far as work product goes, again, that anything created is the property of Davidson Weaver and will go back to us respectively. Um, is that sorry? Okay. Just one question on that word, Davis and Weber. Maybe I'm just thinking this through out loud. Hold on. Sure, no, that's fine. Initially, I thought would it be Davis or Weber, but I guess if really the work that's being done by NUEA is always collective and always region based, then I agree. Okay. 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 Oh, and one thing we also added, and this was Davis's suggestion, was the choice of form clause. Um, that where's that? Um, part M. Sorry, that that would be through the second judicial district court here. Okay. Great. That is hey, it. You have any questions? No. No, I think it looks Thanks good. Thanks for your work on this. Yeah. Okay. Great day. Thanks, Appreciate Stephanie. the work, Ashlyn. Now, it, Davis was supposed to approve this. They approved Have they it. yet? But yes. So I made a few changes for them. I'll send it back to them with the changes we just talked about. And then as long as they're fine with it, I think it's good to go. Okay. I think it's scheduled to be on the commission agenda tomorrow. But do you want to wait until we hear back from Davis officially? I think a verbal is fine if, yeah. if they're okay with those couple, because those aren't really... Yeah, I can, I can try and get a hold of yeah. her today. I think I think I got yeah, you just oh, might. Did. I don't think they're going to have too much concern with it. So it sounds like it's not on the commission agenda no, for right tomorrow. Right. So oh, it'll yeah. be a week from tomorrow. You might. You won't be here then. I won't be here. It's all right. We can do it without them. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, think we'll, I think we'll have to. Yeah, I think we'll have to. We'll have to. We'll have to. We'll have to. <laughs> Great. I'm Thanks, okay with you guys. That. Yeah. All right. Anything else? And Jim hasn't seen it, so it'll yeah. give him a week to look. For sure. Yep. Yeah. We'll okay. put it on next week. Okay. All right. Thank yeah, you so much. Changes and send it back. Thanks. Right. Yeah, Ashley, let's put it on uh, for next week. Bill, yeah. you want to send me a final version once you make those changes again? Yeah. Yeah. I'll get on there. Okay, perfect. Great. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Looks like some of you are staying. Oh, everyone's staying. Mm -hmm. We're just adding Mr. Scott Park. Great. No Commissioner Harvey out there, I take it? I did not see Commissioner Harvey out there, just a Todd Ferrari. Oh. Oh, Todd Ferrari. Ferrari. Yeah, yeah. He be, so wow, he's he, really early. He what said he just finished he his meeting, his previous meeting on Monday. He's, okay. he's just, he's just hanging out. Yeah. Okay, then we'll move on to item three, a discussion regarding our CRA policy. Stephanie Russell, Ashton Tuckett, Chris Crockett, Lauren Thomas, and Scott Parks. Okay. Okay. Are you going to take this one? Yes, absolutely. Did you guys have a chance to take a peek at that? Um, we I sent it to you. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to look at it, but I didn't see it. That's right. I've looked at it, but I think We're I just forgot about it. We're just going to kind of go over it. Um, uh, briefly with you, we'll resend it um, and then give you guys a chance to really take okay. a look at it before we okay. put it on the agenda for a vote. Um, we've been working on this for a really long time, and I think we finally... I all, heard about this when I came into office. I know. I, I think we finally all come to an agreement. Um, we're going to have one more discussion about it uh, at our at our meeting tomorrow, but we just want to get a little bit of input from you. So basically, we've taken the idea of um, participating in a CRA. So that would be when the cities approach us, how we participate, as well as creating our own CRAs. Um, and so we've kept it, we we originally had those two policies separated, but we thought that'd be confusing. So we've combined them together into one uh, to make it really easy for the commission uh, when we bring these either or to your attention. So really the intent is to, to be able to make better evaluations on each project as they come into us. Um, and for you guys to really look at what that project is going to be contributing to the overall economic environment of the county and the overall economic environment of the city, if we're doing a participation one, as it relates to, to that. So we've broken the policy down into the intent, um, 
really uh, how it goes, how it passes through the Economic Development Finance Committee. So that process um, as it relates to the state statute, how it's governed by the state statute. So we incorporated all of that. And then and in section three of the policy, it says procedure for petitioning a county participation in a CRA. So that would be like Riverdale, Roy, any of them coming to us and asking for us to participate. So we've uh, created a form for that. So they have to fill out the form. Nice. And then, then, then it goes before the Economic Development Finance Committee for evaluation. So we're going to pre-screen it for you to make sure it's in line with the policy before we yep. schedule meetings, before we have public meetings and bring everybody in. We're going to make sure it, it, it's something that you guys would be amenable to. Um, and then we'll do an, an initial review with our, uh, and then we will uh, look at doing a potential interlocal agreement. So there'll be a point once it goes to the Economic Development Finance Committee, we'll come to you guys for that final, yeah, we like this, we like the terms and conditions, we like what the project has to offer the county and the city, um, we'd like to move forward. Or we'd have you guys say, no, we'd actually like to lower that rate or maybe even bump the rate. So it gives you guys the flexibility to look at that. Um, Can I ask a question? Sure. So does it have a standard rate and term? Yes. So the standard one is 50% at 15 years, and that matches the school and the fire okay. district's policies. <clears throat> and that's what we wanted to make sure we were consistent with. Any so, others um, that it matches with? Those are the only ones that we use when we create them. We oh. don't use any of the other taxing entities. Okay. Um, we, we only do the school and the fire district. Okay. So if Ogden City wanted to create one, they're they're going to probably go to more than mm -hmm. that. They usually yeah. go to Central Weaver, Weaver Basin, but we don't generally do that when we create our okay. own. Okay. We keep it to those just the three entities. Okay. Thanks. Um. So it says the committee will not recommend county tax increment finance that exceeds fifty percent for fifteen years unless the committee finds that the proposed project will create a significant county public infrastructure benefit. So it's got to have some kind of a public infrastructure benefit. We did talk about maybe putting some language in there that says county um, uh, public infrastructure or and or economic benefit. Would you guys want that flexibility to, to be able to leverage some economic benefit as well as public infrastructure? This is just for participating with other cities. That's a choice you guys is it in there now? It, it's not in there currently, um, but we could add that in, and it so gives you a little bit of flexibility. I don't mind. You can always I don't say mind no. considering it, but I don't want there to be any expectation. Okay. Either with the requester or with the committee. Okay. So if that were the case, I would say leave it out because this is a recommendation we make to you. You guys can always choose to do whatever you want, mm -hmm. and the commissioners do. Yeah. So if we put it out there and advertise it, hey, not just infrastructure, but any economic benefit. Well, yeah, this generates a lot of new jobs that the state's going to collect a lot of tax increment from. Yeah. I would say don't say that. If you want to do that, you can consider it because you're not bound to the recommendations of this group, but we won't recommend it to you unless it has a public infrastructure. And we're yeah. not bound to the to the standard that's being set set out by the policy? No. So this committee makes a recommendation to the yes. commissioners. The commissioners and the policy have... is what feeds the committee. Exactly. Yes, but you okay. don't have to follow the recommendations okay. of the okay. committee. You Correct. can say, thanks okay. for your recommendation committee, but for whatever reason, I we choose to invest in this because okay. it's a good partnership with so-and-so and has economic benefit. But that, does that make sense? Yep. So you can still yeah. do it. And we so wanted to keep that open. I think, the, yeah, I agree. I mean, if, they, if they've got an economic benefit, mm -hmm. And they, I mean, we've got the guardrails in place yep. with the fifty seventy five, which I think is the key key part. Yep. Mm -hmm. And if they say, well, look, we got this infrastructure, but we think that you should look a little higher, maybe raise it to seventy or seventy five because mm -hmm. the economic, they can come to us and yep. then plead their case. Yeah. But we're not making a guarantee. Exactly. And nor are we advertising that that's an option. And or yeah. Yeah. We we want to kind of which we, which we wanna... means the dog and city's refresh will go down. <laughs> <laughs> And Riverdale's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but it still allows you to go beyond the policy mm -hmm. because it's just a it's just a recommendation. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's, okay. And I like the word guardrails. It's a guardrail. Um, and so the same thing would would kind of go with if someone came to us like Snow Basin or Promontory wanted to create one in the unincorporated area, we'd look at we'd start with that 50 at 50 15 mm -hmm. and we'd go with that. And it was the same thing. You guys would have the flexibility to move it. In and out of the guardrails yep. so narrow it in or make it broader um we did add a little bit more of the process 
uh, as it relates to creating one, just so that it's actually in the policy. Um, so we have that codified as this is the process you, you, you as a developer need to go through to create this. So that's, we just fine tune the process really well. And once again, it'll keep you guys from having a whole bunch of meetings <laughs> without having the due diligence done first. And that's really the, pro the whole point of this is to make sure that the developer knows you got to come through staff. Yeah. You got to go through the process. You have to pay your registration fees. You have to do your application. And and then and we'll, there's an expectation, right? We're setting an expectation. Exactly. So they're not just coming in and asking for and the world. asking for the world, and then putting you guys in a position uh -huh. in a public meeting where we have to have that discussion uh -huh. in a public meeting. So this, I think, it creates a streamlined process, sets an expectation. Then they come before you to pitch their case if they, mm -hmm. and and you'll go and we'll bring our recommendation. If our recommendation, we'll let them come pitch their case for seventy five, sure. but we might be recommending yeah. twenty five. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. And that's for you guys to weigh out and decide. Yeah, and what it does, it creates again uh, that they're not they don't have unreal expectations. To come in and said, "Well, you did this for Ogden. Mm -hmm. You gave them gave them a ninety percent thirty year. Why don't you do this?" So you just say, "You know, this is our policy. This is, is moving forward. We're this is how we do business." So yeah. Yeah. okay, makes that's it, this that's pretty much in a, pretty much in a nutshell. Um, I can resend this to you guys after our meeting tomorrow. Um, if if you want, we can get this on the agenda um, for the next couple weeks, or if you want to wait till Gage gets back, it's up to you guys. I'm good with it. And, you know, okay. it's. I'm, I wish we would have had this a couple of years ago. I know. <laughs> no, this is good. Specifically with the haircut years. This is good, right? But, but moving forward, you know, I don't think that we need we need to delay it, do we? I don't see any reason okay to. With, no. On okay. next week's We're just going to tidy up the language in okay. it. Then we'll send you guys a final a final draft. And then um, well, we're going to have a little discussion about it tomorrow. Yeah, and that's then, a good policy. And again, yeah. we can. Yeah, you can. Yeah. <clears throat> in and out, it, you know. Yeah, it leaves you guys. It leaves the final say with you guys, but it yeah. it sets an expectation up front. Mm -hmm. So they're not coming in asking for crazy stuff. Okay. <laughs> and and it does require that we give you a written recommendation. Mm -hmm. So there's yep. at least some history of that there. It's not just. Yeah, uh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And I do agendas for all those meetings, so we always keep agendas. Oh, uh, we don't great. do minutes for the meetings, but we keep agendas, and then um, we'll do a written recommendation. Mm -hmm. So there's a there's a paper trail. I love I like that. it a lot. Okay, okay, great. Thank you so much. We'll tie it up and get that on next week's agenda. Ashlyn, got it. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Great work, guys. It's well, really we're good. done with it. I'm, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> it took longer than expected. It just makes everything easier. It really does. Yep. Yep. Jeremy, see Sean and uh, yep, Sean yep. and Bill. Yep. More paper for you. Go in here for. Oh, you're back. Sorry, I didn't see you come in. I just got. I just got. Oh, you were there. <laughs> I thought you left the room. No. Nope. Okay, we'll move on to item four: discussion regarding EV charging site agreement terms and conditions. Sean Wilkinson, Stephanie Russell, Bill Ross, and Ashlyn Tuckett. Sean. All right. So. Commissioner, there's a few, how long has it been? It's been, it's been a several bit. weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we had the presentation from Brandy Grace, and I forgot her name. What's the other? Aaron. Uh, Aaron. Yes. But they came and they were proposing it, that they would install EV charging stations around the county, and we would get a portion of that revenue from people that use uh, the EV charging stations. So they sent us a proposed contract. But in that contract, there were some things that we, we just wanted to bring up to you because it looks like the county will be on the hook to provide the power uh, to these sites and, and we'll be charged for that. So that kind of comes off the top of our reimbursement if I'm reading this correct. So that that wasn't, at least that I recall, I don't know that that was mentioned in the initial presentation, but we wanted to discuss that, see what your interest level is and, and see if we should just go back and negotiate out of that or, or how this works but and so Stephanie you may know more so explain to me why this is solar right well they, they will put solar panels on it to help 
to oh, subsidize oh. the power. But there will still be. But there will still be. They will still be hooked up to the grid. These are the high voltage ones that will charge it in mm -hmm. like a quarter of the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so we're paying for the power. We were paying well, for we, the power. We, we, the we produce us the the location. They'll come and put all the stuff in, but we have to maintain the, the look. So, say if we did one at the like the the horseshoe pond. Yeah, by the bathrooms there. Right. We would provide. They would. We would just say you get this land. They'd come and put the parking things in. Put the yeah. Install all of it, but then we'd have to just make sure maintain the the parking area. And well, but we we have to pay for the power and pay for the power. Yes, yeah. and pay for the power. Yep. I thought didn't you say ten percent? So it says leaseholders agree to pay eight cents per kilowatt for power produced by solar panels at site within scope. Solar costs shall offset compensation. Yeah. Any remaining power costs shall be borne by the leaseholder and paid to its power provider. So not knowing what these things are going to mm -hmm. actually cost, I think this is risky. We, I, who knows? I don't know how much uh, that power idea. costs, but I'd, I'd like that information mm -hmm. before we enter into a contract. And I don't imagine great. that. Chris Crockett would recommend we sign this right now. As yeah. it. There's lots of things wrong with this contract. In that it doesn't contain a lot of standard terms and provisions that you would see in contracts. Um, I don't even know. Do we have a sites identified of where we We do. This? We, we actually um, do have sites identified. A couple, yeah. don't we? Yeah. We gave them like five and we're going to pick maybe two. So, I mean, you can enter into it. There's really no issue with that, but we would want to expand the insurance, the indemnification provisions. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd want to put in our standard county um, provisions. It's just, it's very, very bare bones for what they're doing. I'd probably take a look at the Q Energy contract just because that's yeah. similar into using terms that are like that for a contract like this, but I wouldn't sign it in this form. So would you like us to maybe get with them and say we were interested in participating, but we need a totally a different contract and provide a contract? Well, and we need to know some kind of ballpark of what that what power, yeah, what power, power is going to cost. And, and I'm guessing the power cost is based on how many people use. And that they may say, well, if more people use it, even though your power cost is higher, you get more of a reimbursement. So it just offsets itself. But are, are we doing this just to call it good because we <laughs> want to be good stewards of the environment or are we doing this to make money or right. I guess that's that's where I don't know that's not my call so Chris I have a question too and I think I asked it when they initially came in and I don't remember the answer you gave me if I did ask do we have to go through procurement for this no this is one that I confirmed with Jason and I can go back and find my text messages it was using our site to allow a company to come in um, it's similar to the Q Energy one, um, where we wouldn't really have to procure out where, okay. how, what we want to do with our land. Um, but yeah, no. Okay. If, if it, I guess, if it costs us money. If it costs to, us money to put the power in, does that? And that's anything? one thing. I guess I would have to look at that too, because what I was uh, thinking before is that it wouldn't cost us. I, anything. I agree. I was under the impression that, that this was, was no was cost not, until you brought that up until to this. attention. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I I guess what we'd want to know first is this something even the commission wants to entertain? And they're kind of vague in this last sentence. It says, well, so it's basically the proceeds would, they call it rent, so be determined in separate lease agreement after construction costs. So we don't even know what no, we the don't. return is. I know. Whether it, but I think she was saying 10% was of the bill, but which I don't, I don't think 10% pays for it. It might barely pay for more. Yeah, I think we need more information yeah. on what it's going to cost us. We need to know, like, if it, how we terminate, uh -huh. if we decide uh -huh. we don't want to continue on uh -huh. with it, who owns the equipment, who's going to, how long we've had that. Yeah, it's just, it's premature. Okay. So, yeah. What do you think, Gage? I, yeah, this is a little too vague for me. Yeah. That's, kind, some... of, that's kind of where we were at on it, too. Yeah, I mean, I think we need to get the cost tied down. What's yeah, it going to cost sure. us? Yep. You know, is it ten percent, right? Maybe you know. And I don't mind being a good public suit, you know, yeah. break even. Yeah, but I don't know but, if we're going to lose money. But I don't want to subsidize right. it. Nope. <laughs> right. It's a private company too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I think, and I agree with Chris. This is 
a little too big a contract. <laughs> Let me respond uh, to Brandy and Aaron and just say, this is kind of where we're at. We would need a, a lot more additional information. And Chris, maybe I'll just get with you really quick and make a list of the additional information that we would need yeah. before we'd be able to even consider so, and consider entering into a contract. What is Brandy's connection to this group? It's it's outside of UAC. So is it her own personal? Like, I think so. Personal company. Uh -huh. It's not her company, but it's. I yes. thought I thought it was. Is it? I don't know. No, it's, it's not her her company. She's working for them. She's but, yeah. I think she's an employee. Yeah, she's um, outside of UAC though. Yeah. She made that clear when she came in. Yeah. Yeah. This has nothing to do with UAC. Yeah. yeah. Let me respond to her <laughs> well, and, and Aaron. Oh, go ahead, Chris. Did they give, or was it just to test the waters, or did they give like a formal presentation and like show like here's some examples of where we've done this before, um, in other counties? Or are we the very first? They haven't set it up anywhere else. Yeah, they're they're just to, they're getting, they're trying to find out locations and they, that kind of across the state. This isn't just yeah. our county. Is so that's what they're doing is they're going to all the counties. Mm -hmm. They're trying to have places for the federal and Utah go, go, state government that they would have places to charge if they were to travel throughout the state. So this company, that's why they're kind of trying to push it. But yeah. it's kind of it is similar to the to the methane harvesting. Yeah. It's a it's a pilot. It's a pilot type of a program. My guess is Voltus got a bunch of federal dollars from somewhere and they're trying to create these partnerships that that We've been hit up for other types of partnerships like this with EV stations from different companies. This isn't the first one we've been hit up. It's just this was the first one that came with us to us with some some form of a structure. <laughs> the other ones are just kind of theoretical. A lot of these companies have gotten uh, federal subsidies to set up EV stations, and they're still trying to figure out how to do it. Yep. So I would say maybe you and I have a chat, um, and we put a list of criteria together that we would need before we bring it back mm -hmm. to to the commission. Okay. That'd be Does great. that sound okay? That, yeah, that sounds good. Okay. And then we'll we'll just get back with you on that if okay. they're able to fulfill that criteria. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Oh. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Well, we're right on time. Good job. Look at us. Maybe there's a common denominator. <laughs> <laughs> I've said it before and I get in trouble. I thought Sarah was still out of town. Is she back? Uh, she must be because I thought she was in Europe. She hmm. told me last week she was in Europe. Really? Yeah, maybe she's not. Okay. Got it. That's it for this one. I want to say there's Mr. Time. Todd. The other two are... Oh, you guys go over to see TCG yet? I'm going to go this morning. tomorrow this morning. Wednesday. You were up on stage. Oh, that's right. <laughs> was, I was checking people in 6 a.m. 6 a.m., really? Yeah, well, we set up. We put about 750 through check-in this morning. Wow. But it went pretty well. Wow. So, Everybody having a good time over there? Yeah. It's off to a good start. Should we get turnout this year? Yeah. Good. Booths are full. We have 40 people on waiting lists for wow. food space. That's crazy. But it's always hard when you have a facility because you can't explode a facility for a single event. Right. You know, it just doesn't make fiscal sense because you can't you don't have a lot of the or that big. But I think this tinker in the prime that's looking at coming will be a really good. Will it be similar in size to this or smaller? It's smaller with a lot of potential. I think at some point we should get to about three quarters of the size of down a little bigger. I think it'll come in about half the size. Nice. But yeah, and it's really interesting this conference. If you look at the private things that these companies are doing peripherally, I'm renting out the monarchs. I mean, they're spending a ton of dollars outside. That's awesome. That's on them. Just that singular yeah, space. That's which awesome. really good. How long are they actually in town? Sunday through Wednesday night. Are you guys so coming to the party? I think so. The so we'll stay Thursday, Thursday for some private meetings. Where's Most the party this year? Amphitheater. Amphitheater. Oh, yeah. It's kind of a beach theme. Nice. Get your flip flops on. Yeah. Flip flop. Okay. Well, I'll be gone. So. What? Right. When are you leaving? Wednesday. Wednesday afternoon. Yeah. Somewhere fun or meetings? Oh yeah, fun. 
Uh, yeah, fine. Oh, well, fine once I get there. Yeah, Australia. long ride. Right. 23 hours then fun. Is it 23 hours? That's yeah. Fun. It's about, yeah. I know, it depends on how you go. I, I did it in uh, 19. <laughs> that, doesn't make, that doesn't make me feel a lot better. <laughs> Do you go through Hong Kong? Uh uh, we went through Hawaii. Went through Valley? Uh, uh, Hawaii? Yeah. Yeah, I went through Hawaii, so it ended up being 19. I don't. Are you going to? We go Hawaii? straight out of LA. Oh, you are? Yeah, yeah I flew out of San Francisco, that's why. Oh. Yeah, no, you, you'll, yeah, you're going to be on the plane for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> it's all oh. right. You'll enjoy it. I remember laying on the floor, like down by my dad's feet, because I just can't <laughs> sit in that chair any longer. Huh. I was Benadryl sure. becomes your I friend. was 17. Ben yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. your kids are young. Yeah. yeah the Benadryl. Benadryl and some vodka. <laughs> <laughs> That'll set you right. Together? There you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That'll be a real enjoy. That's how my, uh, my, my boyfriend's mother, she lives in San Francisco, and her... Her boyfriend is from Australia. Oh, really? So every, every three months, they go back and forth between Sydney wow. and San Francisco. And she just liquors herself up. So wow. sleeps, yeah. through, sleeps through the flights. Wow. <laughs> yeah, they do it every three months. It's, it's pretty rough. That's a long time. Yeah. Every three months. Mm -hmm. We waiting on uh, we waiting Sarah. On Kevin, Sarah. We're not waiting on Todd. No. Are they coming? Do you know? I've been texted. So oh, you have you, been? You want oh. me to give you a 30,000 foot overview? I don't have the pretty piece of paper for you. Are you in charge of this? Would you? <laughs> Sarah wrote it up, but yeah, I'm the chairperson. She's back from Europe? Yeah, she flew in yesterday. Oh, wow. So basically, it's TTAP. Yeah, yeah, We're asking you basically to hold it the same as we have before. Same increase. Uh, we get a 10% kick on the $30,000. We're at 32 right now. There's Jim. There he is. Um, we're at 30 now. Which is 32 right now. Okay. And it gets a little kicker every year. And this is for us to start um, new expos events in Ogden. It gets split up usually. We get points if it's in one of our venues. So it's bringing events to our venues. Um, and it gets split up usually five or six different events throughout the year um, to kind of establish them. And the whole goal is to find one that we think will be sustainable by year two or year three. Let just continue to come back to the county. I think historically, if you look, probably somewhere 11 or 12 of our kind of iconic events started with some TTAB funding, which is a pretty good record. So, didn't we just didn't we raise them last year? Is that when we got to 32? Well, it's the same. We get a little bump every year. We didn't ask for more. Okay. But, All right. Um, there's, there's no change. Jim had asked, sorry, Commissioner Harvey had us to, asked us to work with Sarah because so she will be presenting her budget right before ours because we talked about percentages and where they went. So we sat with her and kind of went through. Look, <clears throat> you remember how last year it was almost kind of a, well, there was a little bit of friction between the Convention Visitors Bureau and the and the culture, the, the CPR, Culture Parks and Recreation. Mm -hmm. So I got those two together and now they're going to be they're going to be hand in hand, so we don't have that again. Just so you know, so in case you were asking, I was asking. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so we did that, and I will say that meeting went better than I thought it would. You know, it's it's adversarial to start with. We're looking at the same pot of money, mm -hmm. but I think we have a pretty good plan to work down. Oh, I hear Kim. Sorry. Miss Bouchard. Oh, we'll Do I have a grasshopper in my hair? No. <laughs> I brought my scooter down. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. How are you? Yeah. Fine. Nice to see you. Hi. How are you? Good. Got hit by a grasshopper on my scooter. Do <laughs> you have safety glasses? Yeah, well, I just know, but I should for the night. She's when I ride around the neighborhood. I, I I ride my normal but I for the nighttime. That's you can't smart. wear sunglasses. That's smart. I just got some safety. Glasses. I do have some. I'll some safety that. glasses. They're not really goggles. <laughs> Once in a while, take a patty. Go click 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 click. Hi, hey, Jessica. That worked out really good. Oh, good. Thanks, Thanks Abe. So Sally's going to type it up. So we just have to explain oh, what we're doing. Okay. 
So I gave them a 30,000 foot, but really? they would love to hear your input. What, what, what did you share? I just said that we were looking to keep first street. the grant funding Back. with the growth was similar as Nobody we had had it. And that Sarah and Nobody Marty and I had met looking at the percentages for Visit Ogden us and we're going to come with kind of a working proposal of how to work that out. Yeah, I think I think the continued ask, as you know, is a consistent model percentage rather than, I mean, you guys have to deal with all the big budgets and make it all work and we understand that. But, you know, based on looking at other models and also knowing the challenge it is for her to, you know, I serve on the UTOPS of tourism. I'm the chair of the UTOPS of tourism board. So she gets that big grant from us, you know, which, you know, I'm glad that she's not here. So I can say, and I think you know this, but to her credit, I mean, she has scratched and clawed and fought for Weber County. You know, I mean, we're, we're a smaller fish in the big pond up there and she is highly respected. In fact, I'm glad she didn't get snagged. I'm glad the governor didn't snag her for Vicki Varela's job because that probably would have been a tough call for her to make, but she's just so passionate about this. So Sarah aside, it's hard for them to come up with their whole marketing plan, their whole strategic vision, their whole everything based on, am I going to get this money or not? You know, I mean, they're up, she's going to get funding for sure. But the hope is that if they do well, and then if they don't do well, then their percentage grows, you know, goes down. If TRT goes down or if our, you know, our dollars. Their percentage would hold their dollars would go down. Yeah, right. And that's fair, you know. Was that about yeah, right? That's 100%. But we also know that there's just not enough to make this <laughs> for everyone for what he does. I mean, obviously, I'm sitting next to a rock star, as you know, that does so much with Little <laughs> and always has, you know, you can't help but make things better. No, and I think there's some staffing changes at Visit Ogden that are going to be beneficial for us. Um, we had the directors do a sit down with Sarah independently and talk about what's working, what's not working. Um, obviously, the conference center is a big sell moving forward, it's beautiful, and so there's some holes to fill there. And I think Marty and I's plan with some of our CIP is to turn those guns towards Golden Spike a little bit, just to update some things so they can get some different type of customers in the door, um, which I think will be fairly easy for us to do. And I think that really we'll lean right back on Visit Ogden to help fill some of those pieces. We do have some of our uh, travel and money this year that's gearing some of our mid-level managers to go to some of these connects with them. Um, I think sometimes we expect them to go to these conferences and explain exactly what we need. That's pretty hard to do because time of year, venues available, what fits. So we have some dollars to send them with them so we can capture some business that we can hold on to. Um, so that's that's the goal for us this year is to actually, we've always asked for assistance. I'm not always sure we've been the best at assisting back. So I think with what we're going to bring to you in budgets, I think will speak for itself. So looking forward to it. I know you've also been dealt another card but with the sheriff's office not being able to staff the yeah. community services positions at a number of facilities, not just the Golden Spike, but the gun range and the, every place that the animal, every place it's needed and how that we fill those and make sure that the places are taken care of still because and of course it's still crap. And, yeah. Don't I know? Uh -huh. And we you'll see you'll see those yeah, I do know. you'll see those reflected on the budget with a couple of options for you guys just to look at. We're hoping that's a little bit short term. You know, they're trying to get some people through the academy and get that program started, but in the short term, we need to cover our facilities. Um, the gun range probably as a single facility got hit the hardest because we went from every single day to two days to we one. We went day to 120 to hours a week of service yeah. to nothing. To nothing. Um, so we're going to show some ways to backfill that. We're current lines on this post. <laughs> <laughs> That's ice sheet. They're new lines. Um, <laughs> um, but we're backfilled a little bit with Parks and Rec right now. We're kind of on the slowdown with Parks and Rec. So we've got them covered pretty well till the end of the year. But you guys will see a proposal. And the way we're proposing, if it comes back, we can easily fold those employees back to Parks and Rec where we're taking them from, some part-timers. So yes. I think it's a pretty good story on our side. 
it's a it's a medium term fix. It's not a two week fix, but it's probably not a five year fix. You know, hopefully we get the prob a program back on its feet because I think you see big impacts at certain places, but we're talking small impacts all over our county with those groups. So, I mean, that's that's a bigger issue that we have to solve, but I think we're pretty good at taking care of our own, at least in the short term, but we put some options. What I admire is it seems like the legs of the stool are just all working together the best they can. Todd, Marty, Sarah, Goal, you know, I mean, all of our resources are just trying to support each other, help each other, our events, everything else, you know? I think you guys will be really happy. We made an offer and it was accepted for a director at the ice sheet. Wonderful. And excellent. He's got a really good reputation in the state for ice sports and running rinks. That happened Friday? Happened Friday. Um, he comes out of the Oval. Um, and he's been in the business for 20 years. Um, and what was really interesting when that job opened, I probably got... 15 phone calls from people in the ice business in our state and surrounding states asking me about it saying hey you should talk to this person or i told them to call so we actually had some my my concern you can find a facility guy but ice is pretty specific and we had three or four guys on there that actually had some decent ice experience um so he'll jump in and i think he can make a nice change right off the get-go which will get that place going he'll see how he likes his budget i did it so <laughs> You can complain to me, but I remember Steve Fishburne tried to sell me gourmet ice once. So yeah. Gourmet ice. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a name from the past. Yeah. Gourmet ice. Yeah. Fishburne. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we will be giving you a letter. This is just our first notice, just asking you to kind of hold as is with our grant program. And then at budget times, which will be the end of the month, we'll kind of show you how we think the relationship works the best for us and and what that looks like for the future. And, and there's some work to be done on both sides. You know, we're gonna, we sat with Sarah and we're, our division directors are meeting with Millie and saying, Here, here's what I really need. You know, it, there's always conversations, but I said, you need action items and to report back on action items because having conversations about the what ifs is not getting us anywhere. So I think there'll be a decent change. And Sarah said her team's on board and. And so we'll bring you something a little more cohesive and hopefully it feels that way. So Wonderful. I may have missed it, but uh, is she on her way, Sarah? No, she's in Europe. I thought she, she was coming back first day. I think she must have held off. I think she's traveling right now okay. today. She just did Mont Blanc with Melissa Harrison and Kim Graff. They did 110 miles and, you know, hike to hike to hike and rain, snow. <laughs> She'll. Did she get a pan out of it? <laughs> I don't know. I've got More a couple cool. of pictures. They're having fun, but they, you know, one of them snores. Sarah's the lightest sleeper, as I know. Yeah. I, I don't share a room full of her anymore. <laughs> like you sleep way too light for me. <laughs> so, what is? Uh, do you have any questions on this? I don't think Gage did either. No, we talked a little before. And is there anything you guys want us to address just on the? collaborative piece, you're going to see the budget piece. And we're going to be here with Sarah when she presents this time because she's coming in line with us instead of a separate. Budget. I can't tell you how happy that makes me. No, you Thank can, you. You Todd. can tell me. <laughs> well, I credit, you, I credit you for being an integral piece to that and getting that to work together. Because as hard as I tried to well, I'm the say one without calls her, saying, calls you got it. Pesa. It doesn't matter what <laughs> you do. You've done it. Pizza. You've done it. That's great. Kim, thanks for caring continually mm -hmm. about our little area. Yeah, I'll anything, it. anything else that you've got for that us? No. Nope. A lot of years. <laughs> A lot of years. Yeah. A lot of years of caring. Anything yeah. else that you'd like to report on, or you can tell us? Um. If you see Rooster sign coming down on social media, we are not closing. After 30 years, that sign is being taken down and getting a $20,000 refurbish. Yeah, so facelift. Yeah, facelift. So we're letting it play out and then we'll say, um, no, we're not closing. <laughs> I'll tell you, your restaurant is one of the reasons I moved here. Oh, thanks, Stephanie. <laughs> B Street or which one? Coops or uh, now Roosters, yeah. Union Station. My sister and I came up, here, I came up here hiking 
she lives in Cotwood Heights, and we oh, and we cool. had a great hike, and then we came down to she wanted to eat at your restaurant because uh -huh. she likes your beer. Okay. <laughs> and I saw the whole downtown. And I was like, okay. That's and she awesome. looked at me and she's like, you could live here, couldn't you? And I said, yeah, uh -huh. okay. I could. Wow. That's a good story. Well, it's the reason I applied, I applied for the job here. Wow. Was okay. okay. I claim her. There you go. She's a rock star. So. <laughs> well, and a good story about Kim is when we have new events, and this has happened more than once, I'll call her cell phone and go, okay. I need a vendor. I need you to come. You might not make any money, but I will include you in the good ones. Let's see how this works. And, you know, whether it's the nut or some new things that we bring, it's important to have these kind of iconic places come forward yep. and step up. And they've done it many times. Oh. We've had some successes really and some fun. failures. <laughs> well, it's really fun at this time of our life because, you know, I'm kind of transitioning. I have a new young female CEO in Kim Bauscher. And, um, you know, we we have the Mercantile. We did that collaboration with Cafe Mercantile and us and Beehive Cheese. And then we're, we have our hospitality group now out of the back. So we're officing out of the back of the bus depot. And it's just a really fun time to do what we want to do. You know, I mean, we have made a very clear decision that we're going to be a legacy group and we're not, mm -hmm. you know, Pete and I don't need to own it forever or anything, but what we do is different and we can do stuff like that. You know, I mean, yeah. given bandwidth and challenges and all of that helps us a bunch. But I get to play restaurant and I get to like clear a dish, say, hi. <laughs> I don't know how to make coffee or do anything, go back, work a little, come back. It's all switched over with cute young people working or older ladies having lunch. So yeah. I'm living my best life. So She's good at driving a scooter in the <laughs> tomatoes drive by. Yep. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> well, we appreciate your time. We yeah, just want to give you a heads up on kind of where we came with this all. Um, and I'm glad we caught you. I'm glad we yeah. landed you, Stephanie. And we know that the granting <laughs> piece is always an ask, and we do appreciate the. But it the does good bump. work. We're, it we've been really able to work. use that to bring some groups, and it's awesome. So absolutely. So okay. we appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> I know who are these women. I'm Ashlyn. I'm Stephanie's new assistant. So oh, cool. Okay. I'm Jessica. I'm the public relations manager. Excellent. Okay. And then the hammer down there. Chris. Oh, I know. Okay. <laughs> The hammer keeps us safe. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank it's you. All right. Good to see you. Let's go scooting. We should. We should. <laughs> oh, that could be dangerous. That actually sounds really fun. Thanks, guys. Want to saunter? Motion to saunter. So moved. Second. Roll call. Okay. Commissioner Bolosai, Commissioner Harvey, I will saunter and feel. Uh, two thirty times, sir.
we're back in our work session, which is uh, item number five, six. Item number six, a discussion regarding the Western Weber General Plan, amending the master plan, large mixed use development near the Weber River. Charlie Ewer, Sean is uh, excused right now. Rick Grover, Ren Edwards, Andrew Favero, Jeff Beck, Geneva Blanchard, and Wayne Andriotti. Charlie, did I talk about you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I made sure you were the first. I was the first one to say. Thank you. Okay, Charlie, go ahead. We've got, uh, I think you guys are uh, somewhat aware of this project. We've got uh, applicants in the room, uh, uh, Geneva and uh, Jeff here, um, looking to uh, pick up some property and develop it uh, into a master plan community. Um, we went out while uh, the USIP conference was going on out in Tennessee, and we visited Northern Commons, and that is the style of development that these guys are um, entertaining for this particular area. You can see from the map that's in front of you behind the write-up, um, uh, which area out west it is that we're looking at. And it's really uh, a lot of property that's just right there on the east side of the Weber River, between 4700 West and the Weber River and between 12th Street and uh, almost Plain City. So big, big chunk of property there. They want to master plan it, which is an ideal way to plan uh, large swaths of land. Um, I know we, we've got a general plan that suggests that if uh, things are master planned, we should try and help facilitate that as much as possible. Um, right now, if you flip the pages over to the back, second to last page, you'll see what your current general plan is. Of, of the big one, yeah, Charlie? Of the big There are a lot of pages here. Which which page? Second to last of the big. Okay, <laughs> okay got it. I got it. <laughs> That's what that's the the red outline is the the approximate boundary of the property, um, and you'll sh you'll see behind that boundary you've got uh, current the current general plan calls for agricultural area I right see. there, right. and so you'll see uh, uh, this is a, a pretty big change. From what about this little piece right here that's kind of outside of by the river, but it's got a little Z going through? You're not going to build a. It's right there, Charlie. It'll be a Z Street. Yeah, I can see it. What is that little? How come that's been left out? It's just a parcel that uh, they don't own. It's a parcel line that yeah hasn't been acquired yet. But it could possibly be, if it were acquired, it could possibly be included. Could be. Thank you. And that's actually a really good thought. If you turn the next page over, you could see how their proposal fits with the existing general plan. And you can see the out parcels that aren't part of their proposal. Um, I think ultimately, um, with whatever uh, recommendation comes through the planning commission, we'll also be recommending that we look at those other out pro uh, properties as well and see if there's a way that we can help them um, uh, transition into this property a little bit better uh, than just leaving them as ag parcels. I mean, maybe they maybe they'll be good as ag parcels too. We have to do a full analysis. This has been before the Planning Commission in a work session. It's scheduled for next Tuesday for a public hearing, a public hearing for the uh, map amendment. And we wanted to chat with you guys first to, to warm you up to the idea, um, but also to take some direction from you guys. Um, I, the Planning Commission asks for uh, a work session with you guys, uh, want, uh, they want to invite you to one of their meetings so that they can have a little bit more time with you and discuss the possibilities of this project or the uh, the pros and cons and really kind of get your takes so that everyone's on the same page. Um, but I wanted to make sure the developer was here as well so that they can kind of give you their their hopes and dreams and you guys can give us some, some guidance and feedback. Any questions for us on this? Questions? Hold on. <laughs> so Charlie, give me the quick version of what would need to change from yeah. our current plan to make this happen. Just the map, just the very last map is what we need to change. 
All right, I can you can kind of see colorblind, so tell me. <laughs> no, good. So if you if you no, look at really wasn't that funny. <laughs> like you you're, you're <laughs> That's why you did it. So if we just look at it from this perspective here, a little bit easier to see the crisp edges. Um, so the put a dot right there. That circle right there, that's the end of 400 South out there on 4700 West. Yeah. So they would pick up 400 South and that red is mixed use commercial and it would follow a new alignment that kind of curves down into 5100 West. So 5100 West has a railroad crossing right now. So you can kind of see how that road can curve from 400 down into 5100 West. Um, and then on both sides of that road, you'd see mixed use commercial development. The darker orange that's around it, Commissioner Harvey, let me see if I can get you. Oh, you're okay. It's okay. Circle here. Right here. There you go. There you go. Uh, that's mixed residential. So you can have any, yes. anywhere from single family to multifamily, according to our general plan uh, in that area. Uh, so you could get some stack flats or some multifamily attached in there. And then outside of that area, uh, in the lighter uh, yellows and greens, you've got larger lots. So you've got medium to large size lots and you've got large uh, rural residential lots. What, what is a large lot, Charlie? Uh, our general plan calls a rural residential lot anything that's an acre or greater. Um, a medium to large lot would be 15,000 square feet or greater. And then the smaller lots would be under that 15,000 square feet or so. So, and our general 8, plan. 8,000, 6,000 square foot lot? Those, those, would be, those would be somewhere between small and medium. Yeah. Eight, uh, five to eight would probably be uh, uh, smallish uh, to medium size. And then anything under 5,000 would be small. So, Single family detached or attached? Um, if it is small um, residential, you can have um, attached or detached. The Planning Commission is also working on a code amendment, not for this project, for another project, but it will affect our multifamily areas where they are looking at um, creating a new type of zone that allows multifamily attached, or excuse me, single family attached, so townhomes or single family stacked and it calls them out and treats them just a little bit differently. So, and stacked be condos. Condos, yep, apartments or condos. See what that is. So how many acres do you have here? Remember? In this, it's about 430. <clears throat> um, so we're talking about 430 acres with uh, a wide variety of, of village type um, development in it. Uh, one thing that they are doing out in the Norton Commons, uh, the analogous community that we went and looked at, is the developer maintains control over development through the life of the project. What that allows the developer to do is write their real estate contracts so that land use, architectural design, all that is pre-selected at the point that they're selling little lots to people. Uh, and so if the developer doesn't, if the developer wants a mixed use commercial area along the street, the developer has a lot of latitude through those sales contracts to say, I'm going to sell this to you, but it's got to be X, Y, and Z. It's got to look X, Y, and Z. It's got to perform X, Y, and Z. Um, and so a large project like this, rather than seeing uh, the nitty gritty details in a development agreement that the county would have to administer, our development agreement would probably be a little bit more along the lines of helping refine what the operational standards of that master developer will be, giving the master developer a lot more discretion to operate inside of that area, but still having some tie, some uh, uh, commitment to the county on the general appearance, feel, look, um, functionality of the community. Well, another benefit of bigger master plan projects where the developer is fully invested on making sure that they're with it through the, through the final build out. Questions, Commissioner Frohr. So I'm assuming the model of this is Norton Commons. Yeah. Yes. And that's where you're still headed. Yep. Um, did you go after that? So we saw Norton Commons. 
I'm a, a very impressed with uh, what they've done there, which was let the developer kind of take their own de destiny within certain guardrails, which I think makes sense because they're the ones putting their money up and the market can change from year to year. So um, I, I'm not opposed to the concept if it follows that model. Obviously, the question is, is how do we deal with infrastructure? Um, how do we get water and sewer to this instead of serve this? I, I've actually think that it makes sense to, I'm going to say, consolidate some of that growth out in Western Weber County at one location, because then you can dedicate the money for infrastructure to that site, rather than have mm -hmm. 12 or 20 different 10 or 15 acre sites around the county, that now everybody's concerned about infrastructure. Um, you know, not that we're going to take private property rights away. I think this this, in my mind, satisfies a lot of the requirements, potential requirements for infrastructure. So that's my first. If if you can show me how you've got infrastructure there, what's going to be for the future, water, sewer, all the goodies that go with it, um, I'm happy to look at it. Yeah. And we can definitely do that. We've we've done a lot of due diligence yeah. leading up to this, so we can answer a lot of that and have that prepared for you. On the week of the 30th, you guys are uh, putting together a design charrette. They're bringing their architect out, same architect from Norton Commons out with the design team to help kind of lay out the property. And when is the, that again? That'll be uh, September 30th, week of September yep. 30th. Yeah, and we, we spoke with them today and they would love to have the commissioners be part of that. If you guys have time, we could set aside some slots where you come in and give feedback and see if that design's going uh, to I'd like to get out. I, I, I would I like to see it. I'd like to be able to see this this thing. Have you right. seen it? Any of you online? Online? Mm -hmm. Where do you so, see this online? NortonCommons.com? Or? Yeah, if you, we if can you, send you the link. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, we could do that. I could send you the link. I could send you over some we fact sheets of, on it, too. We took a lot of video when we were there, too. We were going to put together for you guys to look at. Well, I'd like to see it. That. You know, it's one thing to have the videos. It's another thing <laughs> to share <laughs> the videos. Just been waiting for the okay. opportune time. We can send you some links, too. There is a thing called boots on the ground. I thank you very much, <laughs> just in case you didn't know it. He had boots on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, on the subject of videos and, and photos, I think that's um, a, a, another key reason why having a little bit more time to talk about this specific project <clears throat> in work session would be important if you guys can. Um, and so if we could um, put our calendars together and have you come to a planning commission work session, um, I think that'd be ideal if you guys are comfortable with that. That way we can show the planning commission, we can show you guys, do a little fly through, uh, look at the videos and photos and we'll see what you're gonna get out of it. There. When would that be? Um, well, the next planning commission meeting is October. Oh, I guess we do October have one 17th. On, we do have one on the 17th September. of this month. Um, in fact, we do have enough time. Uh, we were gonna post that agenda today, uh, but we could put, set up a work session for October 17th, if you get, or excuse me, September 17th. If that works for your schedules, if not, we'd be a second Thursday of October. Tuesday. I wish it was Thursday. Oh, second <laughs> Tuesday of October. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Didn't hear what I said. And we could have it at the beginning of the meeting at four thirty, or we could even start early. Mm -hmm. We need to accommodate that schedule. schedule. We can come in early. I'm pretty open. We're looking at October 8th. See. Yeah, it'll be October 8th. I can make myself available that day. October 8th. October the 8th. Should we start at 4? Yeah, let's do that. October the 8th. Okay. Session. That's perfect. 
Um, so the Planning Commission will hear the proposal in their public hearing um, next Tuesday. Uh, they have a variety of options. They can table it until after um, there's some more specific designs, until after they have had more discussions with you guys. They can recommend approval. Um, and then if there are changes after their discussion with you guys, they can come back and revisit it. A uh, couple of different ways that we can approach this. We just want to make sure we started the public process a little bit early uh, in August so that the public don't feel blindsided by it. Well, let me tell you, they're going to all, doesn't matter how many times you tell them, they're going to feel blindsided because they didn't understand it the way you're putting it. You know what I mean? It's anything less than an acre. There. All the work you've done for the last five years, anything less than an acre, I still hear about all the time. Yeah. I think this is a different concept. I mean, what they're planning to bring together here, like we talked in our commission meeting the other night, the, the West Weaver we knew growing up, and even more so these guys, has changed. I mean, our demographics out there have changed. The neat thing about this proposal, and, and I'm doing it all off of what I viewed this site online, spent a lot of time on that website on Google Earth, and it looks like a really neat community. And that's kind of what we're building, what this would build out there. It's going to build a new, you know, area for the community to come together. You know, we joked in the planning commission meeting the other night that, you know, Norton Commons on their website, they do this big car show and stuff down their streets and everything like that. Well, West Weaver might put our own twist on it when this comes out there. We might have a tractor show down the middle of it or something. <laughs> but I mean, I, I think this project would really bring the community together as a whole as the changes are coming. So I I mean, from what I've seen, what I've done research on, I, I really like the thought of this. I agree there's going to be a lot of backlash because this is one of the only areas that is designated in ag out there in our general plan. But that was adamantly done by the landowner at the time who owned it. He's going to keep farming this forever. And, you know, fifth generation farm, they're not going anywhere. And, and that's the unfortunate part. Or all of this probably would have been in a third acre, just like, you know, the rest of the western part of the county was. So I, I think we have a great opportunity here, you know, and, and like you said, Commissioner Froer, you know, we're going to put a lot of units in one area. The neat thing is it's right across from that big industrial area we've got going. We've got housing, you know, it, it might consolidate some of that growth in this western part. Of yeah, and that's, I think that's what, if you look at Norton Commons, that's what they were able to do. Mm -hmm. It really is, it's not a development. It's not a housing development. It's a community. Mm -hmm. People can live, work, and play there. I mean, and that's, I would hope that's what you incorporate. Yeah. A lot of green space, amphitheaters. Uh, I mean, we saw people that, and again, you had single family homes that were, what, probably five or eight yard, eight foot side yard, yeah. but it, it all fit in because in the back there was a big park or, and on the streets, and this is, I'm hoping that the planning commission looks at that, all the infrastructure for garbage, everything else is in the back, the back not the front. So you have these private streets. That you really felt, hey, this is a this is a nice little community, and and Brent's exactly right. You know, we can either do this and and hopefully they put some density out there, or you can take every fifteen or twenty acre yeah. parcel across the county and put you know ten homes on it or fifteen homes and fill it up with you know old trucks and campers in the back. What and, about boats? And you, and you lose your, <laughs> why are you why are you why are you got a thing for boats? Well, the boats have to go somewhere else. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's patchwork water. development. What we do with a lot of the sites we do is patchwork, and you're trying to piece roads together and make everything fit. I mean, you know, my honest hope was with this whole area is we can kind of we've got a great section between the Weber River, 4700 Twelve yeah. Street, and the river. You know, you if that whole area could kind of fit this model. I mean, you're going to bring a great community together, and, and we don't have that patchwork. It's still going to happen, and that's just the way the development goes. But I think something. we can do things a lot better with a project like this. It's just like JDC. We don't get a lot of opportunities to go and develop, a hundred, I mean, 50 acres or 100, let alone, you know, 400 at a time to, to pull this off. So I, I think we have an awesome opportunity. Two things for me I want to hit again on the, the ag protection that ag protection was up to the to the property owner. 
either either the property owner that is and is going to be was or the property owner that was. That's a private that's a private party thing that doesn't have anything in my mind to do with the general plan other than it was marked that way. I agree. Okay, so that disappears with development. The other thing that I'd like to recommend is that, and what Charlie mentioned already, and that is making this whole block at least come all the way out. And I would encourage these folks to maybe try and pick up some of these other parcels if they can. Uh -huh. It would just make that that project even that much better. It's it's a little and, and not that it won't be a beautiful project as it is, but it's a little choppy and you get a little bit thin right in yeah. here. Mm -hmm. So if you could if you could fill in <clears throat> some of that it really enhance it. I think it's a great point. I mean, we have a goal, we have a vision that we kind of know this is the direction we want to go. We might as well, if we're going to amend the general plan, instead of doing it by each parcel there, if we can amend that whole area, similar like we did with form base and a couple of those. There you go. Yeah. The one thing I'll add, I'll go ahead, Jim. No, this is just, it's a big deal. One thing I would add is, um, the reason that we're so excited about this, first and foremost, is because I think you have a very um, kind of future planning planning department that says we want smart growth. We want better growth. And to Bren's point, right now, the growth is let's maximize every 10 to 15 acre parcel. You can't have open space. There's no connectivity. It's it's not about people. It's about yield. And if you look at these communities, I mean, this is a this is a 30 year project for us. I mean, this is not this is not something that we're just going to come in and title and flip. That's not our that's our intention. And when you when you do things in the long term, you plan differently, you build buildings differently because the buildings we build today are going to enhance the value of that property in twenty years, right? That's not we're not just trying to do, make a quick buck. And so, um, if you look at the communities that are similar to this, it it's a long term project, and the value is created over time not just today. And and the the center of it, which I think Bren hit on, is this is about building community. That's why it's not about it's not about cars, it's about people. It's how do people want to live and how do they want to connect? And so everything is centered around that. The open space, how does it how does it promote community? The the sidewalks, the streets, the shops. It's not Euclidean zoning where it's residential here and you got to get in your car and drive down. It's we want you to walk to the bakery or to the or the store or your barber shop because that promotes community. Porches are really important and porches right by the street because that promotes community. So I, I just think the type of development, I think your your plan has created this this op this optimal opportunity and you need large pieces of land to or enact this this plan. That's why we're so excited about this. And and I think to Charlie's point, I mean, the the town architect of Morton Commons, he's done a lot of other projects, is our planner on this. And September 30th, you guys can come meet him and his team. There's 10 people flying in. When is that again? Week of September 30th. Can you get us a formal invitation? Yeah, we'll, we'll send you exactly when like we want you there. Yes, we should have the schedule at the end of this week. So then they'll have slots and everything. So yes, we will get the invitation. But we love your feedback. We love, I mean, there's a lot of stakeholders in here that we want this to be an amazing piece for this county to to show off and and an, and a, a prototype for what development should be like. So when when I see this kind of development, this is what I want on the property that my family owns. Mm -hmm. I don't want one, I don't even want the one-third acres anymore. This is the kind of thing that that does build the community and it's much more powerful. Absolutely. I agree with that. One of my favorite parts of North Commons and uh, Commissioner Broer and Stephanie can attest is I was very surprised you had some single family dwellings right next to duplexes or quads right next to mm -hmm. uh, a, a dentist's uh, office. And normally when you think about that kind of thing, you think that's going to be a mess. That's just nothing's going to work well together. And that community clearly works well together. I mean, you know, when you're going in and buying the property that your single family dwelling is next door to a dentist, but the dentist's office is designed in a way where um, it fits in really nicely with that single family dwelling. And uh, one of the words that, uh, one of the buzzwords that planners like to use is harmonious, creating harmon harmonious communities and land use. And one of the reasons why we used to say 
houses over there and commercial over there is because <laughs> they had a hard time. We had a hard time creating harmony between the two. Um, but through various types of zoning reform, a lot of different communities are coming back to the idea of, no, this is, we can't separate the uses. We just need to figure out how to mitigate the impacts of having those those uh, uses together. And this, this community, Norton Commons, and having a, a developer-driven, developer-motivated um, uh, solution, I think it offers one of the best solutions because then it's not up to us to create every little regulation or every little stipulation or standard on how they're going to develop because most of those stipulations and standards aren't necessarily about their development. It's how their development plugs in with their neighbor, right? Well, they are their own neighbors for most of it. And so it will uh, not require quite as much of that oversight from the county. And one of the subtleties of these types of developments are the connectivity that the green spaces create. Yeah. So you're actually creating a sense of gathering place, a sense of space, a sense of community. It's and you do that through through the development and through the architecture. And just like just like Charlie's saying, it's through that smart growth principle that you create a sense of community just by the way you're placing certain certain assets inside the development. And when you do smaller types of developments, the 10, 15 acres, you can't do that. It's it's virtually impossible. But when you do large planned out developments like this, it's 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 organic, it happens naturally. Yeah. We get a lot of pushback from the 10 and 20 acre subdividers saying, you want that many pathways or you want that kind of sidewalk or you want the, these kind of amenities out of this? Mm -hmm. uh, claiming that maybe it's too much, but they're not looking at the bigger picture and how we're trying to keep all of these little uh, developments connected together. From a master plan perspective, it doesn't make sense not to connect those communities. Uh, you're just, bringing up the value of your property, rising tides, lift all ships in those cases. Unfortunately, by ownership, though, in some instances, and in a lot of instances out there, you have small parcels just because of the way that the property has been divided to, down through the family over the years. So you're kind of stuck in this, in this bad position of having these 20-acre parcels. If you have a 50-acre parcel, that's big. That's under one ownership. So to get to the point where we have this kind of spread out more, Maybe we need to push back on the developers and say, go buy more. Yeah. Go reconstitute the original farm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. If it was contiguous. Right. Mm -hmm. And if not, start, you know, start trying to pick up more along the way there. Yeah. I agree. Good point. I think, too, well, uh, this whole area out there with the river where it is, I think that, that over the years of some of this, uh, light industrial happens. I think that this whole thing could really be the gem of the western county there with the river running through. I agree. Mm -hmm. I think it's a I think it's, it's really gonna be a cool place. Our general plan talks about 10 acres of open space per thousand people. Um, that's a pretty high standard to meet. Most uh, communities don't have that much open space. We've got a great opportunity where we've got a blank slate on a lot of this to build in some really good programmable open space as well as natural open spaces uh, through these kind of master plan communities. There's also a really good opportunity they to kind of touch on this about the infrastructure and make sure that you're right sizing the infrastructure and that it's in that it's in working in concert with the idea of us doing a renewable energy hub in the industrial areas mm -hmm. so that it becomes a complement and an example of these are how these these areas can be sustainable. And you can have these large growth areas, but look at how sustainable, look at how we're doing self-sustainability. That's something I'd love to see in your proposal. And when I come to your shred, that's what I will contribute is that this has to have a sustainability component to it. Really? We're just so tapped for resources in that area. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, This is all fine and dandy, but what happens when you get a dangus that moves in? <laughs> I fit in. <laughs> <laughs> well, but everybody's got that neighbor, and it's just a... <laughs> So in Norton Commons, they've got, the developer has self-imposed rules and regulations. They essentially operate as a small city. They've got three... Um, for lack of a better word, corporations. They've got a homeowner's association, a commercial owner's association, and a community foundation. And the community foundation is kind of the umbrella organization that 
is the referee between the homeowners association and the community and the commercial owners association. Um, through that, they're doing their own self governance. Government. So this is really about self governance. So when you get a dingus who moves in, they're maybe a dingus because they didn't read all the rules, but the town architect, the design review committee, the foundation council won't allow certain things to happen unless they meet the standards that. Well, I'm just talking about the guy. I mean, I'm just looking a little on the thing that you've got some restaurants and stuff, but the guy that just is a crappy neighbor and that treats the waiters and the people wrong and lets the dog crap all over the place and doesn't clean it up. It just, he's just a, you don't, you don't want that dude or do that. <laughs> <laughs> But what do you do on that? I, I mean, so they can kind of self-govern and say, you know, that's probably not the best place for you. Yeah, and if Is he does, yeah, and if he does move in, strong HOA enforcement. Having a strong HOA is going to be important. There. You know, you're almost talking about uh, Wayne and I may be the only ones that understand this, but a Shangri-La kind of a place. You know what sure. I mean? Are you as old as him? <laughs> I'm about as old as Wayne. No, you're not. <laughs> well, you, you know, or you could classify it as the, the rural feel, the neighbor's dog. Yes. I always tease my brother. They have some places up in Radford Hills. I said, I'm going to move up and bring my pigs with me. <laughs> I don't have any pigs. <laughs> Just to get people excited. But, you know, in, in all honesty, the way that I'm starting to think about this and it started with that little development over by the park in Plain City, how well that's fit into that town. And we've got a little bit of commercial along there, and you're starting to see people on the sidewalks over there. And I'm thinking that people and their fathers thinking about how they live and what they do in these neighborhoods much different than they did maybe even five or ten years ago. Because I think that if they're laid out right and look, aesthetic to the people that not only live there but people that come through that it's some place I want to be. And I'm thinking that uh, a lot of these issues might become issues, but if they are, they need to have some kind of a formal enforcement program that deals with those. But I think that that's going to be in the minority. As long as the only problem I have is where is people going to put their stuff? Yeah. Now that, you know, Americans love their stuff. Especially people here in the West. Yeah. I mean, they're, you know, uh, especially people here in the West. I, I think this thing actually governs itself better because of what it will become than, than a regular standard quarter or third acre subdivision. I really do, because I think people have an understanding of what this is as they're going through the process of purchasing. Mm -hmm. And and I think it actually actually governs itself better than than I'm going to say the majority of our unincorporated community does now. That's good. Really the do. developer keeps the controlling interest in it, and they get to pick who they bring into these yeah. areas, and and they have a say in that. And if they don't like them, guess what? They're not going to build there. By the way, the developer of Norton Commons lives in Norton Commons. He drove drove us right past his house. Um, not his to say family that, does too. Yeah, his family does too. Not to say that we should force. The developers yeah, we, live yeah, out yeah. here, but uh, being, yeah. being out here. it'd be uh, those are the best kinds of communities is when the developer has a motivated self interest in creating something great and it's a long term project, so they can't screw up, you know, in the first five or 10 years and create something terrible and still be expected to, to keep their 30 year vitality um, at build out. Yeah, that's, so the thing that makes Norton Commons work in my mind, the developers on site. Number two, it's a long term. It's not let's get in and get out in two years and sell as many homes as we can and pocket the money. He's in there for life. I mean, he started that back what 30 years, 25, yeah. 30 years ago. Yep. A long time. And you put that in third with strong HOAs. But yeah, Ren's exactly right. You're not going to move into a community like that. If if you want an acre or two acres or three acres and a couple of pigs, you're not gonna move in there. Right? <laughs> but there's a certain group out there. I think there's more and more every day because they're called our kids and grandkids that don't want that. Right. They want a place that they can call home. They don't have to worry about a bunch of yard and they've got friends and family around them. And you can make that happen, but you've got to have yeah. everything in place. 
Yeah, and one one thing we mentioned in our planning commission workshop is what what's so unique about these places is kind of these two ideas of one, it, it promotes free range kids because it's extremely safe and it's very community. The it has a strong community, so kids get on their bikes and they're yeah they're out all day. They're visiting the shops. They're with friends in the open spaces. They're exploring the river, right? And then the other part is it's age in place. It you don't have to go to a a rest home when you get older because you don't need to drive. You can walk to get your basic needs. And then there's a community that's looking out for you. I mean, in some ways, it's it's really Utah from a community-based standpoint. We're, we're very strong community and family. And the, the Founder Norton Commons has four generations living there. Yeah. You have homes that are affordable. You have really expensive homes. And they all just, as Charlie said, it's this harmonious development. And, and it all fits. And it works really well. They've got a couple of buildings over there that is for low-income housing. They can meet the low-income thresholds uh, because they're able to, uh, first off, they've got, you know, all the incentives that, uh, the tax incentives and whatever through uh, low-income federal programs, but um, they're able to actually meet their margins through all the other projects as well that can help these buildings actually and these apartments be uh, affordable for people, the service industry folks who who want to live there and work there. And that's pretty amazing. I mean, you didn't, you wouldn't drive through that community and say if there's anything low income about it. Yeah, it's a beautiful building and it's right next to some expensive homes. Yep. And it works. They also have a school and a YMCA right right there, walkable. Everything's walkable. Yeah. Community pools, a lot of amenities. Anything else you'd like to add? Mr. Grover? I think in a good direction. Um, I've been happy with what Charlie and the developers have worked out. Um, I do have some concern when we get down to the nitty gritty of the development agreement, making sure those specifics are in there to protect the developer and the county. Mm -hmm. Okay, commissioners will plan on October 8th, 4 to 6. And We'll get a, a work session going on then. I'll make sure the planning commission and all of the rest of them know on next Tuesday that um, we're planning on doing a work session on, on their next uh, meeting day. Get some videos and some pictures and maybe do a little fly through. Yeah, that'd be helpful. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you for the presentation. Commissioners, I'll entertain an motion for item seven. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor of the motion.